Who is the most clinical finisher in the Premier League? Using statistics, we're going to be looking at the best finishers in the league and ranking the top five. But first, I'd like to welcome new viewers to the channel. Here on The 12th Man, I discuss all things football, from the big news to in-depth breakdowns of post-match tactics. If you enjoy this type of content and are bored of hearing surface-level punditry on TV, make sure to join the community by subscribing now. Let's get into it. To kick things off, we have to lay down the ground rules. Who can count as part of the list and who can't? All players must fit two criteria. Number one, they must still be playing in the Premier League today. And number two, they have to have scored at least 25 goals. We'll be using expected goal statistics beginning in 2014-2015, as this is when reliable stats begin. For those who aren't aware, expected goals is a stat which tells you how likely a player is to score a shot based on the position they take that shot from. Let's say a player shoots from the edge of the area. On average, this may result in a goal once in five. If he took five shots in a match from this position, his expected goals would therefore be one. If he took 10 shots, his expected goals would be two. A clinical finisher, however, may take 10 shots and consistently score three goals. This is the type of player we're looking for. Our list won't just be a simple tally of who has scored the most, it will be an analysis of who has scored the most compared with the positions they've found themselves in. This is how we define a clinical finisher, someone who takes his chances. In number five, we have a somewhat surprising entrance. In the past six seasons, he scored 50 goals, 39 for one team and 11 for another in 178 matches. With an expected tally of 41, this means he's bagged nine goals more than expected. His worst season for goal scoring when compared with his expected figures was in 2016-2017, one year after winning the title. Here, he scored six goals, three less than expected. His best season, the year before, when he scored 17 goals and five more than expected. Have you guessed who it is yet? It is Riyad Mahrez. This season so far, Mahrez has struggled for game time at Man City with competition from Raheem Sterling and Bernardo Silva. In spite of that, he is still two ahead of his expected tally with four goals in the Premier League. In number four, we have a less surprising entrance. In the past six seasons, he's played 174 matches, scoring 75 goals, spread between two Premier League teams. With an expected tally of 66, he has also scored nine goals more than expected. His worst season was his second for his new team in 2017-2018, where he scored 10 goals and lagged his expected figure by two. His best season? 2018-2019, where he netted an impressive 22 times from 36 matches, five goals more than expected. As a result of his excellent finishing, he shared the golden boot. Have you guessed it? I am of course talking about Sadio Mane. This season, Mane has continued to impress, having scored nine goals in 15 matches, which is two above his expected tally of seven. In position number three, we have another talented finisher. In his last six seasons, he scored 96 goals from 192 matches. With an expected tally of 85, he therefore has 11 goals more than expected. His worst season was in his debut in the Premier League, six seasons ago, where he was able to find the net only five times, despite an expected tally of eight. His best season? The current 2019-2020 season. He has already amassed 16 goals from 16 matches, despite an expected tally of only 11. I'm sure you've guessed this one easily already, but if you haven't, let's just say this year he has been having a party. It is of course, Jamie Vardy. With his form in the current season, it should also come as no surprise 
the Vardy would rank top of the list if we based it only on this season so far. In number two, we have another talented forward. Until recently though, he has been somewhat overlooked as he regularly plays second fiddle to the club's main forward. In the past five seasons, he has scored 47 goals in 144 matches. With an expected figure of just 35, he's excelled with an impressive 12 goals more than expected. His worst season was also his debut in the Premier League in 2015-2016 where he scored only 4 goals. During this season, his expected goals however was also 4, meaning that in his worst season, he was still able to find the net as many times as the stats would have expected. His best season? The following year where he finished 14 times with an expected tally of just 8. Have you guessed who it is yet? It is of course Sonaldo Nazario himself, or Son Hyung Min as anyone other than Mourinho calls him. This is the one you've been waiting for. Who is the most clinical forward in the Premier League? Before I tell you who it is, let's make this interesting. There's a poll in the top right that will pop up now with four names. Mo Salah, Harry Kane, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Sergio Aguero. All incredibly impressive forwards and it could be any one of them. So pause the video now and cast your vote so we can see who the most popular choice might be. In the past six seasons, he's bagged a remarkable 131 goals from 182 matches. With an expected tally of 109, even more impressive is that he is 22 ahead of the expected figure. His worst season came in 2018-2019, where he still scored 17 goals in 28 matches. Here, he was expected to score 16 times, or one fewer. Meaning that even in his worst season, he was still more clinical than his expected tally. His best season? 2016-2017, when he scored 29 goals in 30 matches, beating his expected tally by an unbelievable 9. With 9 goals in 15 matches this season already, 3 above the expected value, we have the truly incredible finishing prowess of... Harry Kane. To recap, in 5th we have Riyad Mahrez with 9 goals more than expected across 6 seasons. Saudi Mane in 4th, also with 9 extra goals. Jamie Vardy in 3rd with 11 extra. Sun Jung Min with 12. And finally Harry Kane way out on his own with 22 more than expected. You're probably surprised to see the likes of Mo Salah not making the cut, especially those of you who voted for him in the poll. So let's take a look at his stats and a few of the other biggest names in the league as well. Mo Salah has played in the Premier League across four seasons, three with Liverpool and one with Chelsea. However, his time at Chelsea involved only three matches so the vast majority of the data come from his Liverpool spell. In total, he has played 90 matches, scoring an almost unbelievable 61 goals. With an expected goals of 55, this puts his tally six higher than expected. During Salah's first season at Liverpool, he registered his best tally of 32 goals, bagging seven times more than the expected figures. Interestingly, when that season is removed from the stats, Salah actually falls behind his expected totals. Next, we have one of the longest serving, very top Premier League players, Sergio Aguero. In the past six seasons, he has scored an impressive 121 goals from 164 matches. With an expected tally of 115, Aguero has racked up six more goals than expected. He has also scored only 10 fewer goals than Harry Kane over the past six seasons and ranks second on our list for goals scored. 
Interestingly, however, he didn't make our top five most clinical finishers. This is because he has been playing in arguably the top Premier League team during this period, and as a result, his teammates have created many chances for him, hence he also has a higher expected tally. As I mentioned at the beginning, reliable expected goal stats only date back six years in the Premier League. Personally, I would be very interested to see if this continued further back in time, because from my eyes at least, Aguero has been one of the most clinical finishers I have ever seen. But my opinion is not relevant here, as we are basing the table on statistics. Next, we have Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Spanning three seasons for Arsenal, Aubameyang has scored 42 goals in just 64 matches, hitting the ground running immediately after his January signing in 2017. With an expected figure of 42, he sits two ahead. While his tally during his time at Arsenal is currently two greater than expected, it is interesting and somewhat surprising that this number becomes four worse than expected if we include his final three and a half seasons at Dortmund also. During his five seasons in the Premier League, Marcus Rashford has played 127 matches, scoring 37 goals. With an expected tally of 38, he lags the expected number by one goal. With a total of 10 Premier League goals this season, Rashford has already recorded his joint highest total in a Premier League season. Interestingly though, his real goal tally versus the expected number for the season is actually slightly worse than his career average. This indicates that his finishing hasn't suddenly improved, it is his ability to get into dangerous positions which has. Finally, we have Raheem Sterling. During six seasons, he's racked up 181 matches, scoring 63 goals in the process. With an expected tally of 68, he is five goals behind where he should be, making him the least clinical forward on our list. It should be noted, however, that Sterling has seen improvement in his finishing over the past couple of seasons, with 2018-2019 being the first year that he was actually ahead of his expected tally. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate if you could just leave a like. It helps massively with the YouTube algorithm, and for a tiny new channel like this, those types of things go a long way. If you'd like to see more content like this in the future too, join the community now by simply subscribing and turning on notifications so you're aware when a new video is out.